Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be a match between Dream and Raynor here on Eternal Empire, the latter edition. Bottom left-hand corner, we have the Green Zerg player. It is Raynor from Team Clash. And in the top right from Brave Star Gaming, it is the Blue Terran player, Dream, who just currently got eliminated from the group stages of the current GSL season. But he made it there, so he's an incredible Korean Terran player who will give Raynor all that he can handle in this game. Raynor was the runner-up in BlizzCon back in 2019, so he's an excellent Zerg player. He is a very young. He is 18 years old. Hold on a second. I get these young kids mixed up with their ages. <laughs> 16, 18, 17 here from, whoop, from Raynor. And a one Rax expand here from Dream. Mm -hmm. Rainer is... Oh, he's 17. He'll be 18 in July. So, yeah. These kids, man. They are exceptionally good. 17 years old. A runner-up at BlizzCon. Like, second place. Second place at BlizzCon. Beat Serral. Beat the reigning world champion to get there. Rainer's ZVZ against Serral is some of the craziest stuff. I don't know what it is. Serral's ZVZ win percentage is higher than any other matchup that he has right now, according to Oligulac. But if you put Raynor into the group, things get weird all of a sudden. It's kind of, it's I, I don't know what it is. I'm not sure if anybody knows what it is. I'm not honestly sure that Serral knows what it is. So we have a Reaper on the way, as we traditionally do here in ZBTs. The Reaper's name is Lip. L-I-H-P. And his twin brother, Phil, have been competing since they were born. Phil always seemed to have the upper hand at things like sports and grades, but Lip was never far behind. When Phil joined the Dominion Reaper Corps to fight the Zerg, Lip followed. But he was put into the reserve force, furious at being second again. He has bided his time, and now his chance has finally arrived. Lyft takes the field, determined to get more worker kills than Phil, and finally be the son his mother brags about at the next family reunion. Or I don't know, maybe you'll die. That's an option here too. Okay, so Lyft and Phil just spell backwards with each other. I got there. I figured it out about halfway through that reading. Falcon's smart sometimes, even if he does have three remaining brain cells. So, I don't know. Reaper could get some stuff done. Kitty 8 Charge does hit that drone. He wants it. He wants that drone so bad. But the drone is hiding. Rainer controlling it very well. Trying to get, I don't know, a Zergling kill or something. But seriously, getting a drone kill as a Reaper in today's StarCraft 2 age, it is so hard to do. It used to not be the case. Ooh, we tried to Kitty 8 Charge that queen off the creep, which would have been a pretty Gosu maneuver there. But, yeah, at the end of time, not much happening here for Reaper Lift. And that's all That's all he's got going. So, anyway, Hellion opening here from Dream, making a starport to after the factory. Ooh, a bunker at the third base location. That is some hot stuff. I didn't know he was doing that. I just figured the Reaper was doing the standard things here. But SCV comes up, tries to keep the bunker repaired as long as possible here. Incredible. And he's actually keeping the drone. Oh my gosh, the delay. The delay on this base is disgustingly good. 3.30 for that third base. Rainer wanted that down at 2.30. I guarantee he wanted it down by 2.30 and no later. And now it's 3.30 he gets it down. That is an opening from Dream. That's what I like to see against these Zerg players who really want to go greedy, but slowing them down messes them up and really hurts their mid game. So right now, Dream on two bases, Rainer on two bases. Everything's looking really shiny for the Terran player. He's got 29 workers. He's going for Cloak Banshee, which the Overlord does got because it has speed, because Rainer got speed first. Which is, again, a good thing to do if you're worried about what your opponent is up to. And the answer is a quick third command center, which means Rainer could honestly just throw down a fourth hatch here and be okay. I'm looking at it. I don't see a reason not to, to be honest with you. I guess maybe he is worried about Hellions ruining his day, but I mean, this is not an all-in by any stretch. It will be some Hellion harass, but like a fourth base up here would be pretty good for you. We'll see. We'll see what he does. He's going for a lair. He's going for some additional gas. He's oversaturating, so he can saturate his third base as soon as it pops. And that third base is just about done for Dream. Loving that stuff. So is he actually going for Banshee, or did he cancel that when he got scouted? Uh, he did. He canceled that when it got scouted. He moved right into a reactor starport. So whether that's going to be for a couple Vikings, probably for medevacs would be my guess. 
And then maybe he goes for an armory and some kind of a hellbat attack. These early attacks can be very damaging to Zerg players for sure. Raynor, on the other hand, just got two evolution chambers here at about five minutes. He's taking all of the gases at his first and second base. Third base just kind of getting saturated at this point. Again, later than he wants it to, he's very annoyed. I can tell through the screen. Stim in production for the Zerg, or for the Terran player. For the Zerg player, he's getting Stim. That is actually something. There's a uh, Imba mode for StarCraft 2, right? Where uh, actually Husky came up with the, with the idea years ago, and then one of his buddies implemented it. But you can basically choose different things in the beginning of your game. When you're beginning your game in the arcade, and what it comes down to, nice snipe on that Overlord, is you can give all units Stim. You can have it so when units die, they come back as mindless AI-controlled zombies that will attack anything that comes across them. You can make it so that overlords explode when they die. You can make it so that everything shoots projectiles that are banelings. It's insanity, and it's really fun, and we should do that again sometime out on Twitch. Have done that on the past. Haven't done it for a while, though. Anywho, still no fourth base from Raynor, and he's saturating his third base. This is really weird to me. I mean, Dream's on three bases. Rainer's on three bases. That's a fourth. Okay, so we're just going to go six and a half minute fourth. Trying to hold this Vespine, but the Terran player is going to set up right about here in about a minute and a half. Because that's what I've seen on this map when it comes to ZVT. Is Zerg players do like to take this as their fourth. Having that Vespine geyser is nice, but also the high ground is a problem. Because Terran sets up here, and they can harass your mineral line down here, and then you're very sad. As, remember what I said about the Terran army showing up earlier than I thought they would? But they are here now. Zerglings. Ah, they force a cancel on the hatch. Only a couple Marines die there. That was a great trade out of Dream. I gotta cast more Dream. I know he's been around, but he's playing really well right now. He's playing fantastically in 2020, and I imagine he'll continue to do so. 1-1, finishing up for Dream. If he had 1-1, that would have been a better situation for him. But that said, Rainer's plus one Grand Carapace is coming up. And that's really good against Marines, too. So there we go. It's just, uh, if they have the 1-1 one, one and you have the plus one armor, you're in a better situation. Hellion's on the attack, and Raynor's going mutas. He's got the spire. He's making seven mutalisks right now. Okay, we've seen this attempted from Raynor. We've seen this not work from Raynor recently. Where he ends up losing 42 mutalisks, and bad things are afoot. Hmm, I just feel like against really good Terran players, mutas are not super viable unless you happen to be Serral. Or Rogue or Dark are one of the super duper elite Zerg players in the world today. Sue could probably pull it off, though. I haven't seen him try it. It's just there's so many things that can kill Mutalisks. You have to have abjectly perfect control to keep these guys alive. Because if they fly over a group of Marines like this, they all die. If they fly over two Widow Mines, they all die. If they fly over a couple of Missile Turrets, they can all die. They fly over a Thor clumped up, they can die. Like, there are so many things Terran has to kill Mutalisks. It's not as, like, short as Phoenix is. Like, your opponent makes Mutalisks when you're a Protoss player. You just make a bunch of Phoenix and you crush them. But still, there are a lot of ways Terrans can get rid of them. And if you're not constantly babysitting these guys and constantly making sure they don't fly over groups of Marines like this, then you can do a lot of good stuff with them. I've seen Serral control them in a way that is just beautiful to behold. He makes seven Mutalisks against somebody like TY, and he doesn't lose any of them, and he wins. And it's... It just feels like mutas are incredibly overpowered, but they just require so much skill. So much skill is the trick. Rainer is taking a fifth base down to the south of his fourth. Dream's got a fourth base under construction over here, too. He's got his Thors. He's got his Marines. He's making a ton of barracks. Three barracks at a time. Two-two for his Lings and his Banelings. Centrifugal Hooks is done. This is what I'm talking about right there. That's exactly what I'm talking about is just flying a little bit carelessly, and bam, you lost three Mutas for absolutely nothing. These are not good trades. Those kind of trades are bad trades. That said, the creep spread is beautiful from Raynor. Got a bit of a push coming down this left side while these guys are kind of floating in the middle here. That group of Marines. God, the Mutas barely find a way out. Do they find a way out? They try to go north. There is some dead airspace there, but they almost lose a Mutalisk in the process. They're going to go into the main base and see what they can do. Taking... Oh, Muta does go down to that missile turret. Marines ready. Thor splash happening. The Mutas are just trying to get out at this stage. It's not really working all that well for them. Okay. No, you can't hold still. Okay, there we go. I thought they were going to gather right there. This is exactly the problem. Exactly the problem with Mutalisks. 
I just, resources lost here are 2,700 for Rainer and 800 for Dream. That's what this can do. Look at Rainer's income, though. It's uh, substantially higher than the Terran players right now. He has all these bases, and he is at 86 workers. So he can afford to lose some stuff. He can afford to be a little bit cost efficient here. I'm not saying he's lost the game already. The early stage, his control has not been as good as someone who is going to make Mutalists needs to be. Yeah, the Ling Bane I'm more worried about for Dream than I am the Mutalisks. Yeah, so much Zerg Baneling here. Zergling Baneling getting some stuff done and then pulling out when it's scary. Muta's trying to attack on in this front door. Thor gets a couple splash hits off on them Mutalisks. Thor here, a good answer to Banelings and to Mutas because it takes a lot of Baneling hits to kill a Thor, I can tell you that much. It's a lot. Oh, but the Baneling snuck into that natural base for Dream. Wiped out 12 of those SCVs, but the Mutas again getting chased away. Ling's all going to die there. Dream trying to come up this left side and get some stuff done. That's a planetary. I don't think there are enough Banelings to take it down. The Lings and the Banelings together can make a really potent combination in trying to destroy those, destroy those planetaries, but... They decided there weren't quite enough of them at this point. So both players taking a bit of damage there. Still 8,000 resources lost for a Rainer and 3,000 lost for Dream. That said, at 3,900, so we're getting closer on that count. These Ling counterattacks from Rainer are just nonstop. These are 2-2 two, two Lings. Widowmines burrow in. Don't get any hits off. Ling's coming into the third base because they know that's not a planetary. It's going to be a safe place to be. Hold position. Getting some serious work done. Look at this. The Lings are getting cleaned out, but they take 12 more SCVs with them. This is some really good ZVT. Rainer making three more Mutalisks, eight more Zerglings at a time. Adding units in a little bit here. Both players are maxed out at 11 minutes. If you're not maxed out at 11 minutes, well, you're not as good as Rainer or Dream are, it turns out. A lot of Banelings coming up. Some Marines eating some Banelings early. That's fine. They can roll with that, but 20 Banelings in production. This is where Terran really, really struggles. Is when the Zerg just has a bajillion of them. A bajillion Banelings. Rainer does end up forcing a fifth cancel for the Terran player. Attacking at the fifth base of the Zerg at the same time. Hellbats in the front against the Zerglings. Really roasting them up pretty effectively. But these Lings have upgrades. And the Hellbats are all gone. There are still some Banelings here. Is there enough? I don't know. Are we worried about the Widow Mines? Pull back, pull back. Absorbing the Widow Mine hits largely the Thors. One Thor does go down because this is a lot of 2 2 Banelings. More Banelings in production. Mutalisks going to town on that fourth mineral line, too. A lot of SCVs going down over there. These Marines at the fifth base are trying to take down the hatchery. The fourth base is taking a ton of damage, but there are so many Banelings. But reinforcing units coming in. The Thors absorbing a ton of shots here. This is what I'm talking about. From those Thors, they need to target down the hatch and maybe just get out of there. So many Banelings continuing to roll in, but not making connections on what they want to. And the Zerg army is forced to pull back again and again. And the fourth hatch does go down. Rainer ends up losing that hatchery. And I feel like the fifth base is in a lot of trouble here too. He's going to try to head up that way and take it down. Mutalisk does pop out, but takes Thor shots and Marine shots and gets killed. Oh my gosh, this hatchery's down too. Dream! He's doing some good stuff here. The Marines are engaging with these Mutalisks. There aren't enough Marines for that, though. The Muta Ball is a little bit too heavy. Those Changelings maybe giving some uh, a false sense of confidence to the Marines who are actually real. Hey, guys, we got this. And then the Changelings aren't actually shooting. They're like, what are you guys doing? Got to take down them Mutalisks. And then everybody dies. That would be a horrible betrayal, wouldn't it? That's like the most evil use of Changelings you could possibly have is to give fellow marines more confidence than they should have hilarious all right so the mutas have wrecked dreams attempt at a fourth base though so dream is on three bases rainer's on four bases because he's managed to take this one dream's done some serious work but he's also taking some serious damage widow mines getting some decent hits off there rainer pulling back he knows he can't just go for it because of those widow mines marines and turrets waiting for the mutas to come into that third base i'm going to shut it down if dream can take down this base I kind of like his chances in this game. Rainer is re-establishing the 6 o'clock. That was his 5th at one point. It's gone now. Is he doing it? He's coming. Dude, that's a sack. Rainer's going to sack this hatch too. This is how you have to beat Zerg. It's by constantly killing bases and killing drones. If you're not doing those things, you're not winning the game. Mutalisks flying into the 3rd base, or the natural base of Dream, causing some problems there. 
Uh, the Mutas do have plus two flyer attack, which makes them extremely potent as they do splash damage. And every one of those hits on that splash is improved by that upgrade. So Rainer reestablishes this hatchery and he's reestablishing his fourth too. He's just taking advantage of the fact that Dream's Army isn't super fast, not with the Thors. And it can't really be in all these many places at once. So Rainer's being very patient, whittling down individual uh, individual marauders here. Ultralisks in production with chitinous plating. So you're going to have to deal with Ultras. Widowmine's pretty good against Ultras because they ignore armor. Thor's good against Ultras just because they do big chunk damage. Oh, that Thor's dead, though. Fare thee well, Thor. You were left alone, and now you're dead. That's what happens if you're playing against somebody like Raynor. Individual Thors get surrounded and murdered. It's like unattended children will be, like, given a puppy. <laughs> we see sometimes in stores. Unattended Thors will be hugged to death. Get out of there. The Muta's chasing these guys down. Just unloading because otherwise everybody's going to die. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. A lot of Banelings exploding on that Thor, but he does get picked up and saved in the meantime. This is a good game. This is a really stupid good ZVT right now. Man, Rainer, Dream, giving each other all they can handle. Income tab has at times been in Dream's favor, but has largely been in Rainer's side of that graph for pretty much the entire game at this stage. So Dream has a fourth base. He's going to try to build a fifth base up here. Army supply is 143 to 116 in favor of the Terran player. Does he have the 3-3? Of course he does. He has drilling claws and he has plus two armor for his vehicle stuff. These Mutas in here? Man, Mutas are in the natural base again. Ultralisk in the mix, running, kiting away from the Ultralisk. Thor's getting caught up in the mix, though, and getting wrecked. Is there enough for these Ultras? There are a bunch of Marauders, but they're kind of standing their ground and getting destroyed. The Ultralisk crushing through that armor. That army was superior to them. The Planetary doing all right, and the Ultralisk decide to get out. Did any of them die in that engagement? No. All Ultralisks survived that engagement, all five of them. These guys taking a bad... That was really some bad choices there. Drop. Trying to snipe down the Spire, but uh, there are enough Zerglings here with enough upgrades to stop that from happening. So the Planetary lives for Dream, and that's the big deal. He is down in Army Supply right now. He has lost 23,000 worth, worth of resources. Rainer's lost 32,000 himself. Hit that like button if you're enjoying this game. Holy cannoli. This is a good one. Rainer's lost so many bases, and he's still okay. Dream has lost so many bases, and he's still okay. I mean, okay, Rainer is up 184 to 140 supply, which is bad. Dream's at 38 SCVs, which is bad. He is, um, I know he has mules, I get it, but he has lost 49 workers at this game, and a result, Rainer's only lost 14, which is just not a good metric. Like, killing Zerg bases is how you win ZVTs, or TVZs in particular, but if you also lose a ton of bases, it kind of they just cancel each other out. You know what I mean. Dream really wants this base. He's like, I killed this once. I can do it again. Oh, those poor marauders, though. Pick them up. Pick them up. A bit of a sandwich attempt. But none of the stuff can shoot up. So picking up is going to be a decent uh, decent way to work your mutas. Do find the 12 o'clock again. Once again, another engagement here at the Rich Fest being Geyser base for Dream. And he does shove away the Zerg ground forces. But the Muters are shutting down his attempt at a fifth base up here to the north. 179 to 138 supply. It is not looking good for Dream. It's a good game. He's doing okay for himself. He has a decent army supply. Again, he has mules. Again, he has multiple orbitals here wherein he can call down the mules. And by that, I mean he has two orbitals that can call down the mules right now. Maybe not as many as I once thought. Marines just outnumbered heartily by these plus two Mutalisks. That said, Mutas are trapped a little bit. Oh no, taking splash from those Thors. That range is insane. Uh. These Mutas are kind of trapped. That Okay, Rainer's like, all right, fine. Ultra Bane Ling taking down that planetary. Taking four SCVs with them, taking a ton of income from the Terran player that he needed. The Mutalisks going after supply depots. This Marine, very brave and exceptionally dead, as those two things can sometimes go together. Uh, Rainer's going to lose a hatch, but I think he's okay. 
This is a really, really tight game. I know the supply is favoring Rainer by about 40, but the army supply is bigger for Dream. Oh, the Muta's taking hits there again. Tissue regeneration is really good for those Mutalisk, regenerating their health when they're out of combat, which is right now, as we can see, 69, 70, 71, 72. It's way faster than it will regen for other Zerg units that are injured, like, for example, Ultralisks, which, where are they, by the way? Yeah, this one. Like, look at this. 30, 31. It's so much slower. High ground here. A lot of Marauders in the mix. A lot of Marauders. Pretty good versus Ultralisks. Trying to... Really, Rainer? That's a cheeky base to take. Are you seriously... Oh, man. That's the last source of income for Dream. So this is happening. Dream is winning this engagement down to the south, but he's losing his entire economy up north at the same time. Rainer is able to basically bait Dream and defending with everything that he has. And then Rainer just counterattacks with a handful of Bailings and a couple Ultralisks. And he's taking out entire bases at the meantime. Are there enough Terran forces to fight right now? The Ultras are taking hits. The Lings are absorbing a lot of shots intended for the Ultralisk. That Thor does get picked up after it's surrounded. Nice Widowmine hit, but uh, is there enough here for Dream to hold on? His income is nothing. His bank is nothing. I think he is done, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate his stick to right now. He's trying to unload. He's trying to be in a smart place against the largely ground swarm right now. But trying to expand there is just absolutely suicide. You can't expand there. He's trying. He's trying to hold on to it as best he can. But these are fully upgraded Ultras and Lings and Banelings, and it's just too much. Just too much, Zerg. The Thors are done. Microing as well as he can here is Dream. But he's not going to land that. He's losing nine, ten more SCVs. He's down to three total workers. And if that's your good game, Raider gets the win. In 21 minutes and 47 seconds in what was a bloodbath for a 20-minute game. Look at this. Usually 50,000 resources lost don't happen until you get to like 30 or 35 minutes in a game. This was non-stop. This was Rainer winning a game despite losing four hatcheries and 41 drones and 35 mutalisks. Is that all of his mutas? He had two left. He lost all of his mutalisks, but his ultra ling bailing transfer or transition was good enough to get the win. I mean, again, you can kill four hatcheries as a Terran player, but if you lose two planetaries and two orbitals and don't have any income at the left left uh, at the end of the game because you lost 96 SCVs. You're still not going to win. He did the right stuff. He just couldn't defend well enough at the same time. And that was a struggle. That was a struggle, struggle game for uh, Dream. But I think he acquitted himself well. I really want to cast more Dream, especially in TVZ. He seems to know what he's doing. He seems to be really dangerous. It's just that at this point, Rainer is playing exceptionally well. So no shame in this loss today without question. Man... What a ma uh, just that was tons of fun. That, what a what a match. Just what a match. If you had told me that Rainer would lose 35 of his 37 mutalisks in this match and still win, I would have told you no. But he did such a good job attacking undefended bases or moderately defended bases for Dream while also kind of holding on to his own on the creep there. How many creep tumors died? 59 is a good number of creep tumors to die. But he just had enough creep going with enough advance warning that it was. It was a good deal. And the Mutas did damage. It's not like they all died accomplishing nothing. The Mutas are responsible for a lot of those SCV kills. So I think Rainer got his money's worth out of them. And he got the win. Whoo! Amazing. What an incredible, incredible game. And yeah. That's going to be it for me. So this has been... Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.